Humble is our top value, but it's also something that's very important for every leader and staff member. Humility comes when you're putting other people first. And I think as a leader, I always want another person to shine. And so humility for me says, let the person shine so that they can grow. And then, you know, I, I can step down and step back and be able to allow them to grow and even lead. As we found out this year, a healthy culture is tied so deeply to the health of an organization, the health of a leader, the health of a staff. So we're excited to have Senior Vice President of Communications and Operations, Kim Williams, to sit down with ECFA President Michael Martin, both who have been at ECFA for over a decade as colleagues, can speak deeply into the culture here at ECFA. We wanna go behind the seal, behind the scenes, to share with you how the three H's here at ECFA have made such a positive impact. Stick around. Start small, but start and be intentional. It's really important to be intentional around culture um, and to take, even if it's a toxic work environment, um, to take it slowly, but be humble. And if the leader can be humble in that environment, it will catch on. It will catch on like wildfire. Well, my friend and ECFA colleague, Kim Williams, welcome to the ECFA podcast. Thank you, Michael. I'm very excited to be here and talk about culture today. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that you made some time to be with us. Um, you have your hands in so many things <laughs> that are happening at ECFA. I really don't know how we got on your calendar. <laughs> to make Someone it made it happen. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, and I will say too, for anyone who's listening, I mean, this is the Behind the Seal podcast, the behind the scenes at ECFA today is there is construction that is happening <laughs> above us. So yes. if you hear rumbling or anything like that, it's not the dentist office, but there's some kind of construction that's happening. That's so. right. So we're being flexible here today. There you go. There's probably a podcast about that, right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Roll with so. the punches. Right. So no, but I am so grateful to have you here. I benefit from your wisdom on a daily basis. Just so appreciate and value the opportunity to work with you. It's been over 10 years now that you yes. and I have been able to work together yes. and uh, your role now as Senior Vice President of Communications and Operations. I really wasn't joking earlier when I said you have your hand in a <laughs> lot of things. <laughs> I do. I do. I have benefited from being under your leadership too, Michael. <clears throat> and um, I, I believe that uh, we kind of grow off of each other. And um, when you're good, I'm good. And we just make each other better. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate yeah. that. And just recently, we had the opportunity also to get to honor you for 15 years yes. of service at ECFA. So I would say, hey, at about 15 years, I mean, we should have you on the podcast <laughs> so all the members can get to know you a little bit better. But congratulations thank for you. that. And just thank you for your faithfulness thank in you. serving. Thank you so much. I'm really the behind the scenes person. So this is very new for me doing a podcast. So Thank you. Yeah, I hope that our members will benefit from it. Yeah, well, you bet. And you're right. I do want to um, head in the conversation. One of the areas I know you're very passionate around is culture. And yes. there's been some great things that I would say ECFA has continued to grow in over the years and having a, a great God-honoring uh, culture here amongst the team. So we're headed in that direction here in just a moment. Yeah. Um, but maybe first, just if you could uh, just again, in your 15 years of service here at ECFA, are there one or two memories that just kind of oh stand goodness. out as um, highlights for you? Um, it's hard to choose one or two memories, but I think one of the things I've seen over the 15 years is a lot of positive growth. And there's been a lot of momentum um, with you coming on as the president of ECFA. I've seen a lot of positive change. And so I think that would be one great memory that I've had, just to be able to work alongside of you and build the culture the way that we have. And um, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for you as the president and being able to see that the culture is so important and being able to build into that and to be at the place we're at today. Well, thank you. It's, it's an honor, as you know, and <clears throat> it's been fun for me to watch that in you as mm, well. And you. Um, I think I joke all the time, we now have this robust, you know, communications team that's yes. even putting on the podcast that people are listening to today. But I think when I came to ECFA, we were a one person communications team. And that was you. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> what a lot of pressure and responsibility, right? So 
Yeah, we have grown our team and just really reaching out into a lot of different areas, even with new branding and podcasting and our webinars. And um, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time. It is. And so I think, as I recall, one of your, we use the Strengths Finders yes. tool. That's one aspect of kind of the culture here. And uh, am I right that one of your top five strengths is Maximizer? It is. Yeah. So Maximizer and helping others to develop um, is one of my, or two of my top strengths. And so I do love to see the staff uh, utilized to their fullest. And we actually take the um, top five strengths of each staff member and we try to place them into um, a, their skill set and using their top five strengths and different projects that we have. And I love seeing the um, staff prosper and the staff grow and be maximized in that way. So. No, I think that's great. And that gets into, I mean, we want to give just some really practical things for people who are listening to, in addition to just kind of your experiences and yes. reflections uh, behind the scenes at ECFA. But I think just spending even maybe a little more time on that strengths finders mm -hmm. before we go into some of these other areas. How do you, on a practical level, lead in that way with the team? Like how do we, as let's just say, we're even in the interview process with someone, what does that look like to yes. identify their top strengths and then just on throughout their their employment here? Sure. So actually I take the um, Strength Finder, we have an Excel worksheet where we list all of our staff strengths and I keep that on hand <laughs> with me all the time. And so it's actually a very intentional thing that I do where I look at the the strengths of each of the staff members and intentionally compliment them and encourage them in those specific strengths. But again, like I said, I will take their strengths and put them into different projects that they would be working on to help them to grow. So it really is intentional um, that we do this. And I think it helps the team to thrive when we take the top five strengths and help them to grow in them because they're already strong in them. So then they can maximize their strengths as they're using them. No, I've seen that too. And I think something about going through that exercise, it really seems to put language around how people feel yes. and how they see the world. And so from my experience too, I think I've seen that in the team. It's a real way to speak of value into yes. them is to say, we know that God has given you certain strengths and then through this tool. And then of course, I mean, there's no like, it's not a perfect, you know, instrument, right. but it is a very valuable tool to say, let's just put some language around the things that are kind of on your heart and that God has yes. put in you. And then, yeah, they don't just sit on a shelf, no. you know, but like you said, you, you carry these around all the time and you utilize them. Yeah, I really do. One of my favorite experiences as well, because yeah, we've done that Strengths Finders for a while now, and um, I think actually on everybody's nameplate or desk, whether they work here in the office or at home, like we have a nice kind of nameplate for yes. them, and it lists um, their top strengths, which which that's kind of fun, and we've done that for years, but. Right. Was it just this past year, maybe the year before that we actually did an exercise too of what are the kind of the yays and the yucks yes, <laughs> like that went right. along with the, each strength? Can you talk right. a little bit about that? Sure. So we did a st staff training around the uh, Strength Finders concept and we put uh, each of the staff members into groups and they worked together on their yays and the yucks. And it really opened the eyes of the staff members on certain people, why they did what they did and how they act the way they act. And it was very eye-opening for them to be able to work together as a team and to see that maybe that person wasn't really against them, but they were just using their strength and the strength came out really strongly. And so it really, um, I think it also helped the staff members to be able to work together better as a team across both teams. And so understanding those yays and the yucks, we can highlight the yays and work on the yucks. And um, I think it was really beneficial. Yeah, I totally agree. And it just uh, should be no surprise, right? I mean, just right out of scripture, we right. know that in terms of the body of Christ, like yes. it's a good thing we're not all hands or we're right. not all feet. Right. Or, uh, but the way that God has really utilized each strength, uh, each person's strength, and we've really yes. seen that within the team. And, and that's been a blessing. Thank mm -hmm. you for leading us in that exercise. Oh, thank you. That is um, a real passion of mine. And you know that, like the um, leading out of the strengths and helping people to grow in those th areas is really Re very rewarding for me. Yeah, same here. Well, another um, just, I think, takeaway from the culture and leadership that you've been a part mm -hmm. of as well is getting on this journey of 
putting into words the values, uh, the cultural values here mm-hmm. at UCFA. And um, it's been really fun to see we're at a place where we call them the three H's. Yes. And I'd like to ask you about that in mm-hmm. a moment. But even just the process of going from, I think, kind of inherently sort of knowing what some values were, or maybe there were some things that were on paper. But um, I wouldn't say that it was um, something that everybody could easily identify with and then also articulate, but we've come to a really different place now. So I'd love to just ask you about that and for other organizations that are listening and going through that process as well, just kind of trying to identify like, what is our culture? How would we describe it? What are our strengths? Yeah. So um, I'm going to share the three H's, which are- Drum roll. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) drum roll, which are humble, hardworking, and healthy. And so- it was definitely a process that we went through to come up with these three H's. Uh, Michael, I think you were the spearhead behind it. And I was going to say, I don't, I don't know who. I'm pretty that was. sure you okay. were and early on when you <laughs> became the president. And I was so skeptical. I thought, all right, Michael, you know, we have our culture and we have it on paper. And we li- literally tucked it away into a file and didn't pull it back out and talk about it. But when we came together and collaborated as a senior leadership team on the uh, cultural value and the playbook and the three H's, it started coming to life. And I probably, you probably didn't know this, but I was a little bit, um, not just skeptical, but I was probably hesitant is a better word. Um, Was that the fourth H, hesitant? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the fourth silent H, hesitant. Yeah. But... um, you pressed in and, you know, we didn't file, just file it away. We actually started talking about it and we as the leaders started living it out more. And then um, I think that the team called out on, the next middle management called on and they started living it out and we started talking about it. We never filed it away. You know, it became, actually became part of our culture and it was really um it what didn't happen open uh, it didn't happen overnight but it was a transformation and so i i thank you for that i thank you for maybe putting up with me and you didn't even know there was some hesitancy there so um now we're living out the three h's transformation is such a great word mm-hmm. because yeah it was not an overnight thing no. so i'd encourage anybody who's listening i mean if you're in that process as an organization of just trying to identify and articulate those values uh, don't give up you know yes, um, it yes. isn't an overnight thing but just to speak to what you just said uh, it is really fun to see now that even as we as other team members even are engaged in the process of interviewing uh, potential candidates to come yes. on the team, which we've been in a season of real, real growth in mm-hmm. that area, new team members coming on. I think I've shared with you before, one of the most fun things is once someone maybe gets to an interview process and I'm involved and it's usually more yes. towards the end, um, we'll kind of bring this up and the person who's interviewing with us is starting to talk about the three yeah. H's. It is really something. It's really something to watch because even uh, we have different staff members interview the person that we're interviewing and they start talking about the three H's and I just sit back and marvel that it's uh, it's in their blood, um, the three H's in the culture and that they can talk about it and that they're excited about it. Um, you don't talk about something you're not really excited about. So it, it be- has become the buzz around ECFA and that's really great. No, I think so too. And just to Uh, just piggyback on what you said as well, which is the process that we went through is, you know, I think we would have been able to check a box years ago and say, oh yeah, we have organization values and they're in a policy somewhere. Um, Probably pretty generic. I think a lot of different values, but we did go through the process of saying, well, if it's not something that's memorable or it's not easy for the team to be able to communicate, like there's more work that needs to be done. And that's how we ended up with, uh, conveniently, they all started with the same letter, <laughs> yes. so that was nice. The three H's. I'd love to just have you share a little bit more about mm-hmm. each one of those. Mm-hmm. And again, we're not saying that these are values that should be other you know, organizations. No. They're as unique as each organization is unique. Yes. But just for those who are listening, I think that'd be a fun point just to talk about, starting with uh, humble. Like, yes. why is it that we... Um, hold up humility as one of our top values. Yeah, I would say, you know, humble is our top value, but it's also something that's very important for every leader and staff member. Humility comes when you're putting other people first. 
And I think as a leader, I always want another person to shine. And so humility for me says, let the person shine so that they can grow. And then, you know, I, I can step down and step back and be able to allow them to grow and even lead. So, you know, it starts first at the top. Um, humility does. And so that's where, you know, I want to lead out of humility. You do such a great job and it seems to come natural for you. But I'm curious, I mean, is that ever a struggle for you? I mean, what's uh, what's maybe a challenge in that area? Um, you know, there was a time in my leadership where I came to the point where I didn't have to always be right. And so it was like a light bulb went on. And so when you realize you don't have to always be right and you don't have the all the you don't always have the answers, that makes you humble. It helps you to sit back and um, because my passion is to see other people, you know, be maximized and develop them, that part of it's easy for me because I want to see them rise up and take on new roles at ECFA. So um, I don't want to say it's easy or natural, but I do enjoy like that part of it, that aspect of it. Yes. Well, and you do, you model that as well for a lot of our, again, um, newer, younger leaders coming in. Mm-hmm. And one of the areas around humility that I think is a real passion point for me, and we talk about this as a team as well, is even in scripture, the point of talking about how, I mean, God opposes the proud, yes. <laughs> but gives yes. grace to the humble. Right. And so we certainly want to be in that category of um, God, God, I mean, it's very clear in scripture, God uses those who are humble, right? Yes, for sure. And then I think another one as well, which uh, I hope a lot of our members, you know, who are listening would appreciate this one, which is hardworking. Yes. And that, you know, uh, like many other nonprofit organizations that are out there, uh, I feel like ECFA does, we accomplish a lot with a relatively small team and uh, have the privilege today of serving over 2,700 members, Mm -hmm. you know, located in all, uh, all, all states and doing work around the world supported by 14 million donors. I mean, the, the scope and the reach and the privilege that we have of getting to serve the ECFA membership is just amazing. Um, and so every day we come to work and we say, we want to do our best Mm -hmm. and really work hard and with excellence to serve our members that are out there reaching the world for Christ. Yes. I feel like the, um, this particular age of hardworking is the easiest because we have so many achievers. <laughs> That's on right the staff. on that strength sheet you yes. were talking about. That that achiever column is it's probably full. pretty full. Yeah. yeah. So we come to work every day and we work hard and uh, we really see that in you know the way that we interact with the members and also the products that we produce. Um, I think it's just ingrained in us. So that that age seems to be the easiest for all staff of hardworking. And, but yet we don't want to overlook it. Like it is an important part of who we are um, in serving our members and the commu- Christian community. That's exactly right. And so then the final age of um, healthy, that's where there's a little bit of tension. And by that we mean doing our work, uh, hardworking, but also like at a healthy pace and healthy rhythms and, um, you know, not kind of overdoing it. There's been a lot of conversation, actually, Kim, as you know, on the podcast this season about healthy leadership yes. and uh, different folks that have spoken into that. But tell us a little bit about that third H. <laughs> well, the third H for me was probably the hardest. And I'm not talking about being healthy as in working out or eating healthy, but I'm talking about a healthy work pace and life balance. And Michael, um, you've really helped me in this area, even not just having the H as in healthy, but you've helped to model this for me. Um, in the past, I would I admit that I probably went home and worked a lot in the evenings. I worked on Saturday, and um, it wore on me. And so um, we've set with the staff that we are not to work in the evenings um, unless it's an emergency and not to work on the weekends. And we've set up a really healthy balance for them to be able to come in and do their work, work hard. And then when they go home, it's family time. And so we talk about that and we get on each other sometimes. Good when, account. Speaking of accountability, yeah, it's a good area of accountability. Of accountability. Yep. Yeah, we nicely, but we do remind each other that we want to have that healthy family balance in the evenings and weekends. So thank you, I should say. Oh, well, <laughs> really. 
Thank you. I mean, you encourage me in that as well and the rest of the team. Yeah. And, and when it is part of the culture, I right. mean, it's much easier to flow in that yes. um, than to be kind of a fish going upstream or a fish out of water. Right. I don't know what the analogy is, but I think because we have all embraced that. And mm-hmm. again, the reason being um, is that I think it does come from a place too of like, yes, ministry is important, but our relationship with Christ com- comes first, right. ministry to our yes. family and those things, like they have to be the priority. Right. And so that's really a lot of where that value flows out of, because it can be easy in the the type of work that we're doing and yes. it is so meaningful. Mm-hmm. Um to almost any, too much of any good thing right. can become an unhealthy, yes, an unhealthy area as well. Yeah, I really liked what you said that that's our heart, and you know, Christ is first, like you said, and then family, um, and our heart is to work hard and to promote that healthy balance. And so that's you know, for me now, it's become so much easier, and it's also very liberating. Like I found freedom in that. It took a while. I have to admit, it took a little while for me to get there, but um, it is very liberating, and I feel like I'm living and working a much healthier balance. Yeah, same. And I know we've both kind of been in different seasons where right. things probably were a little bit out of balance, yes. and so I think that's spoken into a lot of the heart of where we're at today. Right. And I just do continue to pray that that's. Uh, something that the rest of the team here uh, is modeling as well. I was going to say another point, uh, too, on the accountability aspect is just for everyone to know, too, that it's not a sort of a Pharisee or like a legalism side of things. Um, But there are structures that have gone into, like you said, for Mm -hmm. instance, on things of email quiet hours or what the expectations are. Um, If that's something that your ministry is working towards, those who are listening, Mm -hmm. um, it does take those structures, but communicated from a place of this isn't legalism, but we have these things in place to help support it, right? Yeah. And that's why I think when you think of it like the three H's, it's not legalism. You know, it's a it's setting boundaries for ourselves and the healthy part just helps us to set boundaries and I don't look at it as legalism at all. Right. Okay. So we have talked about utilizing strengths. Uh, We've talked about cultural values and just how important those are to organizations. Uh, I know another area or just a practical tip that we would pass along something that we have found a lot of value in Mm -hmm. here at ECFA and and no one's paying us to say this, but it is the best Christian workplaces and they're great friends and ministry partners with ECFA. But do you want to talk a little bit about that as a, as a tool that ECFA has utilized over the years? Yeah. So as we um, started talking about the culture and making in those changes um, and then we started hearing the staff talk about it and you know other leaders uh, middle leaders talk about it um, we had decided to take the best Christian workplace survey to see where we are you know and I, I was nervous at first I thought oh what if we get a ton of negativity or negative things that they're saying but we actually saw the opposite So we really saw the fruit of what we had been laboring at. You know, we were very intentional um, with living out the three H's. And so we saw some really great results. And um, I would love to share a few of those, Michael. Um, So we scored a 4.75 out of a 5 with the uh, survey report, which means that we are a flourishing organization. Praise God. Uh, praise God. And, and that's, great job team. That's a huge team. Yeah. Team so effort. really what I'm saying is a reflection of the team too, because we're hearing back from the team. And so that was in the 98th percentile of other Christian organizations like us that are associations. Um, so that was a boost, you know, that was really positive to hear that. Um, I'd love to share a few of the other positive results too. And yeah, go ahead. In that um, we scored in the 98th percentile that um, the staff said that their supervisor truly cares about them as a person. And so that wasn't reflecting upon us so much as senior leaders, but the mid-level um, leaders, it also trickled down to them so that you know they're living out um, those values and that they, they're caring for the staff. And why do you think that is so important, you know, just for others who are listening, the idea of um, within a ministry having supervisors who really truly care about not just what people do for the ministry, but but who they are as a person? 
Yeah, so, you know, they're caring about who they are as a person and even their family life. You know, they're caring about what's going on in their family to be able to help them even. But I think if you don't care for your staff, you could just become this corporate organization rather than a ministry. And we truly are a ministry. We, we say that we are a family, and so we care for our family. So it's, it's very important. Yeah. Are there any other strengths that you would bring out as well or just highlights from our participation over the years? Yeah. So another um, strength or stat that they that we pulled from the report was that the staff members were saying that the leaders were um, acting out of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so I thought, wow, you know, it's really, as a Christian, you strive to do that. But then when you hear the staff say that the leaders are living that way, it really is very rewarding. And um, I don't know, it kind of gives you that boost to keep going and doing what you're doing. Um, Another one that's very close to that, living out the fruit of the Holy Spirit, was that the staff said that the leaders were um, living out the values so these three H's that we had been preaching, if you will, or living out or <laughs> Back promoting, to the three H's. Yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> the staff said that we were living those out as well. Yeah. What would you say to um, l- maybe not so much on the results, but even just from the team about sure. the value of participating? What have you heard from them about just having that opportunity to voice feedback and Not just, you know, the ways that things are going well, which uh, thankfully there are those, but also just how things can be improved or different or other ideas. Like, what do you hear from the team as they have the opportunity? So it's really important to know when you you have your staff take the Best Christian Workplace Survey that it is anonymous. And so I feel like because of that, the staff will open up more. Um, We have heard some really positive things on the comment section and a few criticisms, if you Mm -hmm, will. mm -hmm. But I think the staff feels comfortable enough to take the survey and know that they're not going to be looked down upon or there's not going to be any retaliation. And so I think we've built the team to a level where they feel comfortable taking it. And so one of the things that happened the first couple of years that you were in leadership, we really saw that we took, I mean, we're, we still take it serious, but we took a lot of the um, more negative results and we put it into action. So for example, we took um, conflict of resolution was one of the areas where we wanted to work on as, as leaders. And so we did a book study as leaders and worked through that and really grew in that area, I think. Um, yeah. No, I think that's exactly right. As you were sharing, it was just kind of replaying in yeah. my mind of, I was thinking, what a great tool too for organizations. I mean, I know, yeah, we utilize that in our mm-hmm. say results from one year, just kind of the strategic planning going into next year. Like what right. are the practical things? Sure. Because yeah, as much as we are encouraged by the the positive things that are happening, mm-hmm. it's also such a great opportunity yes. to learn yes, and to be able to have that open opportunity for anyone to be able to share ways that it can be better, which I mean, that's what we're striving for. Yes. Yeah. And I don't want to come across as like we're perfect. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Because that's not humble. Right. And so, you know, there are areas we're wanting to grow in and that we are growing in. And so that's very important to us too, as DCFA leaders. Okay. So there's one area that you had shared, even just coming back to the beginning on the Mm -hmm. the best Christian workplaces. And I would just affirm, which is Mm -hmm. there is that level of vulnerability (laughs) that comes with opening yourself up to that survey. But I would just say from our personal experience, I mean, I would have no questions or regrets at all about going through the process because even as you open yourself up to potentially even any constructive feedback that might come in it is so valuable it is so worth it so even for those who are listening if you're struggling a little bit with that i just encourage you to see i mean at least from our experience it's been so so helpful yeah i would agree with that michael and i would also encourage our members you know in the areas that you might be struggling and there could even be some toxic environment or toxic attitudes. It really does help to get to the core or the root of those things that are going on so that as leaders, you can begin to correct it and course correct. And, but you don't know what you don't know. So if you don't, if you're not taking these types of surveys, you really don't know what the staff is saying. That's exactly right. And now I'm just, I am jumping around a little bit. But every, <laughs> see, this is just like what it's like in the office as we're talking um, and you're sharing as I, I'm thinking of something else, which is, I think also how valuable for a team member to feel like as they voice something, 
Yes. Whether it's in best Christian workplaces or in other ways, but then to actually see their ideas, their constructive yes. feedback implemented, what a huge trust builder right. that, that is. That is so true. And that was one of the other high stats was that the team feels like their voice is heard and we make decisions based on things that they say. And so I think that has been a um, huge um I don't know, leadership and intentionality on the leadership's part to have more team collaboration and brainstorming sessions that it's not just about us making decisions, but we want to hear from the team because they're professionals and they have a lot of knowledge and insight. So we want to utilize them in that way, which I think we're doing a better job at. Yeah, there's just a greater level of ownership mm-hmm. that comes when everyone feels like they have a voice yes. and that they're heard and mm-hmm. then they see change, you right. know? And right. so I think that's great. Well, one other area just to dive into quickly sure. is, so we are the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. Uh-huh. So I, uh, I have to bring up kind of a financial <laughs> <laughs> sure. question. Of course. Um, <clears throat> and that is just the importance to, of as we're looking to invest in our team, the idea of um, doing what we can while being good stewards, part of good stewardship is being good stewards of our people Mm -hmm. and being generous in ways that we Mm -hmm. can be financially. And so um, I know for a lot of nonprofits and churches who are listening, uh, budget is a, you know, Mm -hmm. high consideration. Uh, But what have you seen just in the way of, as God has blessed ECFA, that we would be able to also be a blessing to our staff, the importance of even just the financial aspect of investing back into the team. Sure. Well, I think too, like humility talks about being generous. And so as a humble leader, I want to be generous with the staff. And there's a scripture in Proverbs 11.25 that says, a generous person will prosper and those who refresh others will be refreshed. And so I look at that scripture and apply it to myself as a generous leader will prosper. And I'm not talking about finances per se, but generosity and encouragement, generosity in showing the staff that we appreciate them, um, and even words of encouragement, uh, words of positivity. Uh, I love that. I love being able to boost up a team member or a staff member so that they do feel encouraged. And so just as the scripture says, those who refresh others will be refreshed. And I'm always feeling refreshed when I do that with the team. So I'm actually looking for ways um, to be able to be generous with our staff all the time. (laughs) Good. I'm so glad that you brought that up because Mm yes, you know, financial is one component and in a way that also it does speak very practically to people of um, kind of going along with the other things that are probably even more important, like you said, of um, just knowing, communicating their value um, and affirmation and even generosity with opportunities, opportunities to excel and to grow and to utilize gifts. But um, so anyway, I'm thankful that you expanded it beyond just a a financial (laughs) generosity, but just to like a holistic generosity with our teams. Yeah. So I do think that we as ECFA leaders, you know, we do want to offer great benefits to our staff, which I think we do. You know, we don't want them worrying about their insurance premiums and things like that. And so in doing that, it it kind of lays the groundwork for generosity too. And then it allows us as leaders to be show appreciation because that's already laid out there, you know, and we have the staff, they know what the benefits are, but they, it's like having a surprise birthday party sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we like to surprise them with uh, special days off, you know, around the holidays that were not expected. Um, I love it when we're able to um, give a day off when the staff has set a goal and they've reached it. And that happens a lot with our member accountability when they've gone through so many renewals. But then the communications department, um, we also benefit what they're, the fruit of their labor. And so it's, um, there's a lot of excitement around our staff when we give them extra days off even. I hear a lot of compliments and thank yous from that. And so it's just showing, you know, that encouragement, that generosity of encouragement to them. Um, No, that's right. And to kind of bring together even two ideas of being generous with the team, but also incorporating team feedback. I remember one of the ideas that a a team member had suggested that we've implemented is something called volunteer time off, which I hadn't thought about that Mm -hmm. before. But this that was an idea that was brought to of many of our team members are involved in um, 
local church or local ministry right. or say a mission trip or in other ways. And so being able to even extend that volunteer time off yes. to help encourage um, our team that it's not just about serving ECFA, but right. we have a more kingdom mindset yes. as well. Yeah. And many of the staff have taken advantage of that. It's a new benefit. I think we've had it two years now um, and they love that. They really do. And I think it, like you said, it encourages them to go outside of their church or their ECFA to do a a special ministry or a special um, support day or work day for other uh, ministries in the community. Definitely. So, well, Kim, thank you for just helping us have uh, a bigger vision uh, for what it looks like to be good stewards of our mm. team and culture. And it's been fun to be able to have you on yeah, and thank let you. folks get to know you a little bit better. And also just, again, some of those very practical yes. uh, tools that we covered. But this is kind of that opportunity for me to say, like, is there anything <laughs> we've left out uh, before we sign off for the podcast? Any um, final encouragement to those listening? I would love just to read something that one of our staff left, a comment that they left on the Best Christian Workplace Survey Report. It might be encouraging to um, some of our members. And I would also encourage our members, the leaders, to start small, but start and be intentional. It's really important to be intentional around culture um, and to take, even if it's a toxic work environment, um, to take it slowly, but be humble. And if the leader can be humble in that environment, it will catch on. It will catch on like wildfire. Um, So... Start small, but start. No, that's good. And please do. I think what an appropriate way to be able to end uh, a podcast on a topic like this with actually a comment from one of our ECFA team members. Let's do it. Thank you. So this person said, leadership's genuine care for all staff makes ECFA a very special workplace. When staff feel cared for and valued, it really reflects in their work. This care is shown to me through opportunities for development, encouragement when things are done well, compassion for my family life, listening to my concerns, and taking my ideas and suggestions very seriously, and even included in some of the decisions. So that really sums it up. You know, that was from a staff member, not from us. And so that's ECFA. You know, that gives you a real clear picture of who we are and how we really care for our staff. I love it. Well, and for all of our team who are listening, what a joy (laughs) (laughs) it is for us to get to serve with each one of them. And and Kim, you too. Uh, Just thank you you for all that you do. And thanks for spending a few minutes with us on the podcast today. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate it. Hey, we can't thank you enough for listening to the Behind the Seal podcast from ECFA. A healthy culture is not to be taken for granted. We know that here at ECFA and we're so thankful for the staff that holds Christ in such high esteem, aiming to be more Christ-like ourselves, humbly serving each other. Nothing's perfect, ECFA is not perfect, but what a blessing it is. And we know that if you have a healthy culture at your organization, at your church, you know how much of a blessing it is. And for those that perhaps we know is out there that do not have that culture, we are praying for you. Share this episode with colleagues, be the change, be the Christ-like change, to continue to serve those around you and we pray for you this comes to the end of the 2023 season season two here at ecfa's behind the seal podcast so stick around we're going to take a break for a couple weeks but we're going to dive in to find stories of triumph from our members that you won't want to miss that will encourage your heart and remind you that the lord is at work all around us today tomorrow forever and we're just so excited to be a part of that here at ACFA. Stories of Triumph coming in 2024. God bless.